How in the world can a diseased cell be an advantage for a human being? Biological anthropology has the answer. Hey, and welcome back to Anthropology in 10 or Less. I'm your host, Michael Kilman, and today we're going to explore an example of human variation, sickle cell anemia. Get ready, because today you're in for a little biology lesson. A colleague of mine once said to me that her mother always told her that sickle cell anemia was a black person's disease. Now, some of you out there may have heard this before, and it does affect 8 to 10% of African Americans in the United States. But before we get into our discussion here today, I want to make it clear that this genetic mutation can occur in absolutely anyone, though it does often spread from parent to child. This disease has actually nothing to do with skin color at all, but actually everything to do with geography. And surprisingly, there's actually a significant benefit to having the mutation. The reason? Malaria. Malaria is a single-celled parasitic organism that attacks the red blood cells of humans. It's spread by mosquitoes, specifically of the Anopheles genus, which is found all over the world. But the worst varieties happen to live in the sub-Saharan Africa and Indian regions. Basically, this mosquito picks up the baby parasite from infected human blood, and then the parasite matures in its system without hurting the mosquito. Then, it gets transferred in its adolescence to another human host, where it moves into the person's blood. Once in the bloodstream, malaria begins attacking the blood cells. Basically, it burrows into the cells and uses it like a bunker to hide from your body's immune system. And once inside, it starts to replicate, eventually bursting out of the cell, thus destroying it. This causes severe hemolytic anemia. Hemo meaning blood and lytic meaning to destroy. Red blood cells are essential because they carry oxygen from the lungs to all the body tissues. Less blood cells is less oxygen. Even a mild case of malaria can make you very, very sick, and it is particularly lethal to pregnant women and children. As we talked about in our episode on skin color, anytime we see something killing pregnant women or children in high numbers, we see natural selection at work. Natural selection works very simply. If you can't live long enough to have children, you're out of the gene pool. Survival of the fittest doesn't mean the biggest or the strongest. It means the most fertile and the one who is the most successful at making offspring who themselves will reproduce. And malaria is a big selection factor. In 2015 alone, it killed 438,000 people, and that's with the aid of modern medicine. So imagine how many people it must have killed 10,000 years ago. So anyone with any edge at all automatically becomes the fittest, even if that edge hurts them. Remember, evolution doesn't care if you're happy or healthy, just that you have babies. Okay, so what the hell is sickle cell anemia? Sickle cell anemia is a random genetic mutation. It occurs when one tiny, tiny building block of protein that makes hemoglobin, that's found in red blood cells, is swapped for another one. When this happens, the cell becomes unstable. It goes from a soft, bouncy disc, which is perfect for moving through all the little capillaries in our body, and transforms into a hard crescent shape with sharp corners that get stuck in the small blood vessels and forms clots more easily. It also can't carry as much oxygen and blocks the cells that actually can. This blood type of people with full-blown sickle cell anemia is SS. You don't want to be SS. The rate of death from SS via anemia or heart attack is about 50% before the age of 50, even with modern medicine and treatments like O2 and blood transfusions. Some people, however, are just carriers of sickle cell anemia. Their blood type is AS. That means that only some of their cells will sickle. This is still a problem. You never want your circulatory system to be working below the standard, but it's not nearly as life-threatening as an SS blood type. It really only becomes a big issue if you're doing some strenuous activity, like playing basketball. But remember, evolution doesn't care if you play basketball. Well, unless it gives you more reproductive opportunities. But if you die at age 40 and still manage to have several children, there's no selective pressure to weed out the AS blood type. So how does this relate to malaria? Well, when malaria infects someone with a sickle cell trait, it's in for a rough ride. The cell that the malaria inhabits tends to sickle, which is like the bunker collapsing on top of the parasite. The immune system moves in, and that's the end of that. So people with the trait, but not the full-blown disease, have a measurable advantage. They're less likely to die from malaria than those without the trait. 
and they're less likely to die of the condition itself than those with a full-blown disease. So, in ancient Africa, people with just a touch of the sickle cell anemia would live long enough to have babies that they could pass a trait onto, leading to its high prevalence in certain populations over the course of thousands of years. So again, sickle cell anemia isn't about skin color, it's about geography. In parts of the world where you see high instances of malaria, you see high prevalence of sickle cell, regardless of skin color. By the way, sickle cell is only one of at least nine major syndromes and a number of minor ones that humans have adapted to deal with malaria. Some of these others include favism and thalassemia. And there are other genetic disorders that have become prevalent in humans because it offered a selective advantage evolutionarily speaking. This demonstrates that human variation is definitely impacted by environmental conditions. If you're interested in this topic, check out the book Survival of the Sickest by Dr. Sharon Moalam. Remember, evolution doesn't care if you're healthy or pretty, as long as you're good at making babies, and your babies are good at making babies. But that's all for this episode of Anthropology in 10 or Less. We'll see you next time.